Hello, my name is Peter Clements and I'm lameness and surgery consultant here at the Animal Health Trust. Welcome to the video abstract for my recently accepted research article in the Equine Veterinary Education Journal. The manuscript is titled An Association Between the Planted Distophalus Angle and Hind Limb Lameness in the UK Population of Horses. It is co-authored by Richard Coomer and Sean McCain at Cox Equine in Wales and I have Ian Handel at the University of Edinburgh to thank for the statistical analysis. So why was the study undertaken? If we look at foot balance in general, it is recognised that low heels are the most commonly encountered hoof abnormality of the front feet and there is an abundance of literature relating to medial lateral and dorsopalmar foot balance. Low heels have been associated with forelimb injuries including catastrophic suspensory breakdown and they've been implicated in injuries of the palmar heel or navicular region. A low or a negative plantar distal phalanx angle has also been recognised as the most common hoof imbalance of the hind feet. However, its significance has been largely neglected from literature. This is probably because we do not seem to see the same significant injuries to the plantar half of the foot as we see in the palmar region. What we do know is that both the palmar and the plantar half of the foot plays an important role in maintaining soundness and normal athletic function in the horse. But until recently, until a study by Pezzanite at our last year out of the Colorado Orthopaedic Research Institute, literature investigating the significance of abnormal hind foot balance was lacking. What we knew about dorsal plantar foot balance was down to two studies. Hillary Clayton in 1990 reported a low heel long toe conformation prolonging hind limb break over time and PM in 2006 demonstrated that by altering the dorsal plantar balance of the hind feet through the application of heel wedges it would change the joint angles of the distal interphalangeal joint, the metatarsophalangeal joint and the tarsus at walk and trot. Our study was to investigate whether there was a relationship between plantar distal phalanx angle in horses with defined hind limb lameness, as confirmed by diagnostic analgesia, compared to horses that had no hind limb lameness on full dynamic exam. This is in a UK population of horses that would be useful to UK equine practitioners, so it would differ from the study by Pesanite, which was on a predominantly Western sport horse population. Our null hypothesis was that the plantar distal phalanx angle does not differ in horses with and without hind limb lameness. Data collection involved full dynamic lameness evaluation, diagnostic analgesia to localise the lameness and lateral medial radiographs of the hind feet, which were always part of a larger protocol for radiographing the hind limbs for lameness. The plantar distal phalanx angle is clinically easy to measure on a lateral medial radiograph as the angle between the, a line parallel to the solar surface contacting the ground, as indicated by the yellow line on this radiograph, and a line along the solar margin of the distal phalanx as indicated by the orange line. Without giving too much away, our main findings were that the plantar distal phalanx angle is significantly different between horses with hind limb lameness compared to those without, and we could reject our null hypothesis. The plantar distal phalanx angle is also significantly different depending on the location of lameness. Although our main finding agreed with a similar paper by Pezzanite, the significant difference in distal phalanx angle is associated with a different predominating source of lameness, and it may reflect the different population of horses investigated. The findings from our study have an important implications on clinical practice. Hind foot balance is frequently overlooked, but our study suggests it should be evaluated in any horse presented for poor performance or hind limb lameness. Imbalance may allude to the presence of lameness, and if present, in conjunction with hind limb lameness, must be addressed as part of treating the whole horse. I hope you enjoy reading my original research article, and I thank you for your attention.